So here we're looking at our chapter six test for FST um, with the uh, different factoring methods. Uh, starting with number one, it certainly looks like it is that perfect square trinomial pattern, uh, which of course looks like this. And so what we want to look for is to see if I score it the first term, I get 7x. If I score it the last term, I get 8y. And if I take that product and double it, do I get 112xy? And of course, the answer is yes. So that's how I verify that it is, of course, that pattern. And so then the answer is just really the 7x minus the 8y squared. So again, you can notice that it is going to be that perfect square trinomial pattern or at least guess, because of the 49x squared and the 64y squared. But then you have to check and see, is the 112xy the proper middle term to fit the square of the binomial? In order for it to fit, this 112xy has to be the square root of these two terms, or the product of the square root of those two terms, doubled. And so we do get the 112xy from there, verifying that yes, it is that uh, uh, square of a binomial pattern. This is unfortunate. It looks like number two is almost the same uh, as number one, actually a little bit easier. So notice again that 49m to the sixth and the 64. So when I do uh, square root those, I get 7m cubed and I get 8. When I double them, I do get the middle term. Uh, so this one does, again, factor as 7m cubed plus 8. So again, it's not exactly the same question, but, uh, but very close. With number three, notice the Q to the ninth leads you to believe that uh, you're dealing with perfect cubes. And so use the calculator to help with that if you need to, but um, nine cubed is 729 and eight cubed is 512. So it does fit that pattern, which of course looks like this. So we really just uh, cube root the two terms, and as I was saying, we get a nine when we cube root the 729, so 9, and then this will be a q cubed, and then minus 8. So that's really our binomial. It's the a minus the b. And so that gives me kind of my base units. So to get the term here, the first term in my trinomial, I just square the first term in the binomial. So I need to square 9q cubed. That gives me 81q to the sixth power. To get the next term, I just take the product of these two, so 72 q cubed. And then to get the final term, I take and square the second term here, so squaring the 8 gives us 64. And so that is how that one will factor. Looking at number four, uh, I don't see any special patterns there. The 35v squared, not a perfect square, uh, plus it is being subtracted. Um, so we would really be just be looking at, in this case, since it's just a plain u squared, we could just do the what times what equals negative 35, what plus what equals negative 2. So your factors of 35 that are going to work there would be negative 7 and positive 5. Again, don't let the u's and v's throw you off. It's just going to be u minus 7v and uh, u plus 5v um, is also, yeah, don't let the u's and v's mess you up. With the number 5, uh, again, there's no special patterns. Uh, it is a 12y squared, though, so we'd have to look at the factors for 12, which there's a few and then the factors of 6. Again, there's different ways that we can kind of figure this, but we're aiming for 17y. Uh, again, these values here will be our y's. These will be the plain numbers. Um, we'll set those up in our binomial times a binomial pattern. Um, it's just a matter of well, how do we get the 17y. Um, in this case, again, what we're looking at is we look at multiplying a number from this side by a number from that side, and then the opposite pairs there. So like the 12 times 6, I don't even really have to consider. Uh, it gets up to 72 right away. There's no way I'm getting to 17. 
Uh, 12 and 6 is close, but that gives me 18, not 17. And of course, 24 and 3 not going to work, and 36 and 2 not going to work. Important to note, too, that it is a positive 6, so these are both positive, uh, since this is also positive. Uh, if we look at the 2 and the 6, it's actually impossible for the 2 and the 6 to work out because of the common factors that 2 and 6 both have with the 6 and the 2. So there's no way you can set it up with the 2 and 6. Again, you could look, but it's not going to work. So it has to be the 3 and the 4. Again, if anything, the 4 would have to multiply the 6, so 24 and 3 not going to work. So it looks like it would have to be uh, 3 times 3 which gives us 9, and 4 times 2, which gives us 8. That's how we get the 17. So again, the 3 and the 4 are the y's, and then the 2 and the 3 are the plain numbers. And again, the 3 multiplies the 3, so that means that this 3 goes here, and then the 2 goes there. So 3y plus 2 times 4y plus 3. All right, for number 6, notice we've got a 9y to the 4th plus 6y squared minus 8. So the degrees are a little bit higher. Um, it's not a special pattern, but we can still look at just the factors for 9 and the factors for 8. So not a lot of choices there. Now with the 8 being negative, one of the two would be negative. I would just guess that it's the smaller number, and if I'm wrong, I can switch it easily enough. Um, it looks like, uh, let's see, trying to come up with 6. So if we do negative 6 there and 12 there, that's how we'll come up with 6. So again, we set up our binomials. Uh, the 3s would be the y's, although in this case they're y squared. That's how we multiply them together then and get 9y to the 4th. And then the minus 2 and the 4... Since it's both 3y squareds, it does not really matter which one goes where, because either way they both get multiplied by uh, a 3y squared. So there's what that one looks like, 3y squared minus 2 times a 3y squared plus 4. Now just like it says there, we're going to factor this by grouping. Uh, so we pair the first two, and then pair the second two. Uh, again, remember those are S's, so sometimes my S's don't look that great, but we get S plus 7 after we take the S out, and that kind of leads us to see what we should get here. We take a 3 out, we get S plus 7 as well. So again, what I look at is it's the S plus the 3, and then the S plus the 7. So there's the factored form uh, for that. With number 8, we're still factoring by grouping. Uh, we'll have to be a little bit more careful because we do have... So the 20r squared plus the 15ry. Again, with the minus sign in the middle, you got to be careful. So we've got the 4xr. And it was a minus 3xy, so in my parentheses, it's got to be a plus 3xy. Like that. Um, so we take out what we can from the first pair. So with 20 and 15, we can take out a 5, and we've got an r squared and an r. So we take out a 5r, that leaves us with 4r plus 3y. Again, that leads us to see what we should get in the second binomial here. Uh, the only thing we can take out is an x, so we get 4r plus 3y there as well. Uh, again, what I look at is it's really the 5r minus the x multiplied by the 4r plus the 3y, and that's the factored form for that one. For number 9, the, uh, this is the difference of cubes pattern. There's no common factors or anything there, um, but we do end up, uh, again, with a difference of cubes pattern, which looks like this. And so we cube root the 27a cubed. That gives us uh, 3a. Cube root the 8b cubed. That gives us 2b. So that's the a minus b. So to get my trinomial, I start by squaring the 3a, so that goes here, that'll give me 9a squared, 
The next term is the product of the 3a and the 2b, so we get 6ab, and then we square the 2b that goes over here, uh, and that gives us the 4b squared. Um, and that's all we can do to factor that one. Uh, for number 10, uh, there are no common factors. Um, it looks like it could be a special pattern with the 9x to the 4th and the 16. Uh, so again, that would be that perfect square trinomial pattern, which looks like this. So if it fits that pattern, then it factors as a plus b squared. Um, again, the way we check that is we square root the 9x to the 4th and the 16. That gives us 3x squared and 4. If we multiply that together and double it, and we get the 24x squared, then yes, it is that uh, perfect square trinomial pattern, uh, which of course does work out in this case. So it just factors as the 3x squared plus 4 squared. And number 11 looks like we've got a common factor here. Uh, we can take out a 5x for this one. Gives us 10x squared. Let's see, plus 27x plus 5. Uh, let's see, no special pattern there, so we're just looking at factoring this. So we look at our factors for 10 being 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and the factors for 5 just being 1 and 5. So not very many options, should be able to figure pretty quickly that we would multiply the fives together to get 25 and the two and the one together to get two. Adding those gives us the 27 that we need. Uh, don't forget the five X that's out front. And again, I like to kind of lay it out this way where I put the X's in their place first. And then I look at the fact that the five has to multiply the five. So the other five would go here and then the plus one goes there. So there's our factored form, and again, make sure you don't forget uh, the 5x that we took out earlier. All right, so for the rest of this, we're going to be solving uh, using our factoring methods so that we can then use our zero product property. Uh, for number ten, uh, 12 here, all we can do is factor out an m. So that gives us 11m minus 3. So again, our zero product property says the only way for that product to be zero is if either one of the factors is zero, so either m equals zero, which is really a solution, or 11m minus three equals zero, which would be 11m equals three if we add the three, and m equals three elevenths when we divide by 11. So there's the two solutions, zero and three elevenths. For number 13, again, it looks like you might be able to do something with the factored form there on the left, but you really just need to uh, write it out in standard form and then get everything to the same side. So uh, you could either box or foil that 3x minus 1 times x plus 1. I'm just going to go ahead and get that done here. So again, either boxing or foiling this will get that done, but it ends up being 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Still equals that 25x minus 41, which we don't want. We want it to equal 0. So we'd subtract the 25x, add the 41. That will make the right side equal to 0. Now, this is what we'll have to factor. So we've got the 3x squared minus 23x plus 40, and that equals 0. So there's no special pattern. We're really just looking at our factors for 3, which thankfully there's not too many, and 40. So we've got 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 3 doesn't work, 4 and 10, obviously, 5 and 8. And so there's our list. So again, trying to figure how we can get that to equal a negative 23. So really both of these numbers have to be negative in order for this to work out. So uh, looking at what we would have there, we would really have to multiply the 3 by the negative, 5, or negative 5 to get negative 15 and the 1 by the negative 8 to get negative 8 and adding those together would give us negative 23 which we're going for. See, so we end up with an x and a 3x. Uh, let's see, 
the 3x, that multiplies the minus 5. So the minus 5 goes here, and then the minus 8 would go over here. Now again, it all equals 0. So we set x minus 5 equal to 0, which gives us x equals 5. And we set 3x minus 8 equal to 0, which gives us 3x equals 8, which means x equals 8 thirds. So there are those two solutions there, 5 and 8 thirds. Uh, now for solving number 14, notice right away there's a common factor of t in there. So we can take a t out, and we get 81t squared minus 25. Uh, so now you might notice that that is a difference of two squares, so that can be factored as 9t plus 5 times 9t minus 5. See, so we have t equals 0, and then each of these equals 0 as well. They solve just about exactly the same. We subtract 5 and divide by 9, or we add 5 and divide by 9, so they end up giving us t equals negative 5 ninths and t equals positive 5 ninths. So there we have our different solutions there. And then our last question, uh, we're going to have to factor this by grouping. Again, recognize the four terms right away. So that's really our one method that we have for doing that. So we pair the first two. Again, we do have that minus in the middle, so we switch the sign on the 50p. We also have to switch the sign on the 75. Again, notice also these two signs, the minus here and the minus there, if those don't match, then either this is just not going to work or we did something wrong, so make sure you check that. Uh, besides that, we again go back and we take out what we can. So we can take out a p squared here. We get 2p minus 3. So we should get a 2p minus 3 out of this, and that will happen when we take a 50, or sorry, not a 50, a 25 out. And we get 2p minus 3. So again, really what we're looking at there is it's going to be p squared minus 25 which, again, we should be able to recognize right away as a difference of squares. And, of course, it all equals 0. So this does factor again, p plus 5 times p minus 5, and the 2p minus 3. And so we do end up with three solutions, p equals negative 5, p equals positive 5, and the 2p minus 3 equals 0 would give us uh, 2p equals 3, so p is equal to 3 halves. And so there are those three solutions for that one. Uh, so that's the end of our practice test. Hopefully that was uh, helpful, and thanks for watching.